Hi guys, this video is sponsored by Autodesk, part of a series of sponsored videos where Autodesk have kindly sponsored the Maya Guide channel to create some content based around the uh, Bifrost graph editor. So today's tutorial is um, going to be looking at wrap deforming for effects. Let's get to it. Um, okay, so today I'm just going to create some effects on a model. Um, but I want those effects to play out on an animated model. Um, there's multiple reasons that I might want to do this um, because it's, I mean, for one, it's easier to create effects on a static model and have them play out on an animated uh, model than it is to have them play out on an animated model. Um, I also want to animate masks and things like that, and I don't want to be chasing around this uh, this animated character. So we're going to do it all on this character and transfer it to this character, and it's really simple. I would suggest, in fact, you are going to need to go to, and I'll put this link in the description, you're going to need to go to MJCG Compounds and download these compounds for Bifrost and put them in your Compounds folder. Um, and you will really, really want these... Um, these compounds, they're, they're excellent. And so we're going to be hacking apart some of this stuff um, and using it today. And this is uh, Maxime's compound. So, yeah. Um, right. So let's get started. Let's get started. Let's uh, create the graph first of all. So I'm going to create a um, some particles on this dude. Um, so we're just going to grab all of his geometry here. And I'm just going to put it in like this. So that's his geometry. I'm going to do a basic particles graph. There we go. Let's explode that. Put that over here and let's just tidy up a bit. So we've got our basically our um, array of parts. I'm just going to put in a merge geometry node. So we merge all of those parts together and I'm going to put those into the particles. And we're going to run the particles out into an output. And they're just going to come flying down using lots of gravity and stuff. And so we're going to go into the particle solver. I'm just going to tick on uh, label point ID because we might need it later in some of the effects. Um, I'm going to switch off gravity. I'm going to go to the particles, turn the speed to zero. And I'm going to put live forever on so our particles just live forever. Turn the bounciness off. I don't think there's too much more I need to do. Really, just so those particles all turn up. Only thing I'm going to do, I think, is just change the particle size. 0.3, something like that. Hit enter and play. Right, so there's our particles doing their thing. I'll just uh, um, template our dude so we can still see him and the particles showing up. So that is all good. So the first thing we're going to do is just simply get these particles showing up on our other guy um, and following his motion. Now when um, these uh, animated meshes are translating in a scene, their point positions are changing all of the time. Um, and if you don't want your point position to change, then you want to use a static mesh and transfer that information over. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. And it's really simple. So if you've got um, MJCG tools, then you will be able to get a node called a wrap deformer. Uh, I've got two because I'm just, I've got a copy in there somewhere for some reason. Um, and so now I'm going to get the, um, the rigged parts and I'm going to drag them into the graph and I'm going to use a merge geometry node on those as well. So I'm just going to merge all of those in and plug that in. Right, so in here, in the wrap deformer, we've got base mesh, target mesh, and geometries. Geometries is, in this case, our effect that we want to put onto the wrap deformer. And we want to say, use this static mesh, which is the base mesh, and put it on our animated mesh, which is the target mesh. So let's put our animated mesh in here. Let's put our particles into there, and then let's just get from that merged geometry point um, into the base mesh there. Then our output is going to be our new output, which is the wrap deformer, and we'll just get rid of that one. So now 
we just move this over a little bit. Now if I rewind and play, our particles are turning up on our animated dude, which is really powerful, um, to be honest, because, you know, we're using points here, but we could just be using fire and smoke, and I know we'd want fire and smoke to perhaps work with the velocity of the character, but it, there are many instances where you don't want it to happen. Um, so... Uh, that's uh, one great use for it. Right, so we've got a rep deformer coming out. So now, here's another reason why using the rep deformer is going to be handy. Because I want those particles to start at his feet. And I want the particles to um, to then cover the rest of his body based on a mask. Um, we can have the original particles that are on the guy over here on the static objects showing up at the same time. Just by plugging them in there and bypassing the rep deformer. Um, so for now, we're just going to go and work on that. To, to, you can turn the rep deformer off at any point, so we could just unplug those particles and put in a weight of zero here, and then they just show back up on the original object. So next, I am going to create a, a mask, which is going to be a kill influence for those particles. But in our case, it's actually going to make them show up. So I'm just going to create a cube. And this is going to be used as our kill object. I'm just going to hit the insert key and put the tab down here. And I'm going to scale that down. Let's just bring it over the object. All right, cool. And then I'm just going to animate the scale of that cube over time. Just going up over our object. There we go. So I'm going to put that cube on its own layer. And I'm just going to template that as well so I can still see it animating, doing its thing. I might just start it up a bit higher, actually. Yeah. All right, so we've got a cube in our outliner, which seems to be missing. There we go. There's our cube, and I'm just going to call this kill. And I'm going to drag that into the graph. So now we need to create um, a kill influence for those particles. So I am just going to type in the word mask. And I want a mask influence. Because we want to mask the influence. Um, and then I want to create a kill influence. So I'm typing kill. Kill influence turns up. And I'm just going to plug that into there and that into there. And I'm going to plug this kill influence into the influences section of the particles and I'm going to put our kill shape as the geometry for that mask so it's going to be all the wrong way around uh, probably at first let's just rewind and play and see what we've got so that's kind of like killing them the wrong way around so I'm going to put absolute here um, let's rewind and play that so we can see that it's killing it upside down at the moment, which is fine, because in our mask influence, we can invert this. We can also add drop-off and magnitude and distances and whatnot, um, which is good. So now when I play it, those particles are writing on. Let's just put in a few more particles so they show up a bit quicker. Let's just go with a 1,000 because we're crazy like that, and they'll just show up a bit more quickly. That's all good. So now all we have to do is come back to our wrap deformer and we'll just put a weight of one in there, which has transferred them over. And so if I rewind and play, and let's just make everything else disappear, let's just get rid of the joints. I want to see those and press play. We can see. There we go. Now that's the joy of using the wrap deformer because otherwise with that kill influence I'd have had to have animated a cube or parented it to the body and then tried to animate it without it flicking around everywhere and whatever. And now I don't have to. We've got you know we've got our our uh, kind of a template over here that we can add any effect to and it's gonna update on this guy over here, which is awesome. One thing to note is that these two objects need to have the same geometry count. 
um, you know, in terms of polygons and objects and whatever are attached. So whatever your base has got, your target must have as well. So obviously we can take this further now because basically we're just using points on a model and we're transferring it to another model. So it's kind of endless what we could do at this point. Um, so being the bit of a Bifrost hacker that I am, um, I'm going to go into the Bifrost browser and have a look through some more of Maxime's um, compounds here which are all amazing um, but maybe something like doo -doo 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 -doo, maybe we could use something like this clumping points just just for fun just to see what we can do with it um, to you know happen on one character and show up on another yeah let's let's just give that one a go so I'm just going to import that and that's going to turn up in the graph here um, I think all I'm gonna do is just for now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna copy and paste these into my graph. So copy paste and then I'll probably put them up here somewhere. Boom, here they are, and they've come in with all of these down here. I don't quite know why it does that, but I'm just gonna get rid of these. Or should I put them up here underneath? Oh gosh, it's going crazy. Let's just delete these. <laughs> Sorry for destroying your graph, Maxime. Um, so we can see that it's got a terminal here, and these. I'll just show you what the what it does actually. So it creates a bunch of points, but then it also creates these points that the other points will clump to. So if we press play, we can see that they're all kind of pulling into certain areas. And you know, I'm not saying this is the effect you need, but I'm just going to show you how that you can add any other effect that you want uh, to this setup. So, I've got a terminal going on here. Let's let's get rid of the terminal and let's just open up his pass node here because we know that uh, whatever's plugged in here, this plane, we want our object plugged in there. So, I'm going to plug in our merge geometry into this. And we'll get rid of the plane, and the plane is not going to go because we've still got open this other Bifrost clump shape. So we get rid of that. <clears throat> so there goes our merge geometry into here, into here. And we've got an output here, which is um, all of the set point shapes and everything that's come out after the clumping. So we'll just delete all this and get rid of that. Just gonna open up this a little bit more. And we can compound this up later and clean it all up and that but let's just get rid of these so at the moment all I want to do is plug in because these are just effects um, just plug in these effects into the geometry section of the wrap deformer and I'll do the same with this one as well and I'm just going to give it a new port just because well, it makes me feel better <clears throat> Okay, so now if we rewind and play, there we go, we've got our effects showing up. And also, <laughs> we've still got the particles plugged in because you can plug in multiple effects into that. So <clears throat> we can quickly add lots and lots of effects to this setup, as you can see. Um, you know, we could just go in and compound all of this up so we haven't got to look at it all. Um, and expose various things that we want to. Let's just compound it up like that. <clears throat> yeah, just looks a bit neater now. Now we've created that compound, we can just go into it and we can just make some changes to the look of all of this. So I'll just scroll out here and we'll go to set point shape and I can turn that down to like zero one. Um, actually, that's a little bit too much. Let's just go to zero one. And then on these guys, we don't even need to see them really, but um, for now, let's just turn those down to like zero, zero, one. Um, and we can change the color. Let's just put in another color here. Um, and we could go back to the amount that's being scattered. So we could stick in, I mean, if we wanted to, let's just stick in like a, a six here. So we've got like a lot more going on. 
we rewind, play. It's not too slow, but we can see we've got a lot more density now and you know we can start to render it out and stuff and you can see the head's coming apart and our particles are coming up and we could probably reverse how this works and you know there's there's all sorts we can do. It's it's like you know it's the joyous procedural nature of Bifrost and we've got a little natty compound now and we can just save that off if we want. Um and next time we just plug in our um our geometry to here and away we go. So, you know, we could just say, oh well, let's just call this compound uh sh uh clump points or something crazy. Um and then we could just uh right click and just go publish. And change the name and you know, it, it becomes easy from there. We would just bring it back in and, and connect it all up and we could just go through and create all sorts of effects that work on a Raptor Former. So hope that helps guys. Um it's just a bit of fun but it just it should open up other avenues for you to think about, for you to look at. I mean we we don't have to use particles, this could be snow fire, any other effects you can think of, um and they'll transfer onto any animated data. Cheers.